This is Network 3. We begin tonight with the seventh of eight weekly programmes for the Amateur Choir, a series designed to give help and guidance to amateur choristers and conductors in the rehearsal and performance of works in the choral repertoire. In every programme, we've recorded the actual remarks of the conductor and the results he's obtained from the chorus. We hear first a short rehearsal of music which has just been glanced through, and then the comments made by the conductor. All his remarks are spontaneous and are such as would be spoken at a normal rehearsal. In this seventh programme, the choir of King's College Chapel, Cambridge, with Simon Preston, organ, Howard Goff, cello, and John Pound, double bass, is being rehearsed by David Wilcox in the chorale and first chorus from Jesu Priceless Treasure by Bach. Right, we'll now rehearse the first chorale of Jesu Priceless Treasure. Chord, please. I liked much of that. Um, balance generally was good, but we've got to determine now where the climax of each phrase comes and the climax of the chorale as a whole. In the first phrase, it's obviously the word treasure and the first syllable. So this little crescendo through bar one to the first syllable of treasure, then down again. And in the next phrase, source of purest pleasure, up to the first syllable of pleasure again, and basses define the upward quavers very clearly. Truest friend to me, forte throughout, but with a diminuendo on the semibrieve of me. That's difficult to get absolutely together, and be careful after the diminuendo, we're absolutely together with the word R. Ah. It was ragged on sound there. Can we go as far then as that word R from the start, bearing in mind the need to shape each phrase clearly, and any parts with quavers, bring them out slightly so that the texture is clear. Chord again, please. Without organ this time.
dramatic contrast straight in. So chords are just as important as the forte chords to be together. Again from the start, and every boy, the smallest boys, must watch the piano chords. Again, so there is now. So there is So one or two things which apply to what we're going to sing later in this chorus. First of all, the breathing's noisy. I can often hear burnt in that way, particularly before a forte attack. Do be quiet over your breathing. There's plenty of time there. Um, and on page six, if we look at bar three, when we get a note of long duration, like that dotted semi-breathe, always allow for a growth in the tone. It tended to sag then, particularly from the two lots of sopranos. Um, do make the tone grow through any of those held notes. And altos at the bottom of page six, more tone needed if that quaver run is to come through. Also on page five, altos, bar three, when you go below the tenors, more tone needed. We've got to look not only at our own part, but that of the others to see the relative importance at all times. Let's go then from the bottom of page four, second bar. Can we have a chord, please? Them who walk to the. Yes. Noise, breathing, I could hear. Yes, straight away in, take a breath.
there. Good. As long as you realize where it is, that's the important thing. Um, and there was another one which I don't think you did notice. Top of page six, first bar. The canine trebles it must be D natural. Yeah, that's a B. Sing the first four notes of that page, will you? For me. Two, three. And up to speed. La, da, da, da. as you turn over there, of that D natural. Otherwise, the notes were very accurate. More bass needed at the top of page seven, last bar. It's very difficult to get enough tone there to support the rest of the choir. Uh, from the top of page seven now, first bar chord, please. So this movement now is to build up the tone on the last three pages so that we do get a sense of climax in the last three bars. And in order to do that, we must drop the tone at letter C. And that forte in our copies isn't a Bach marking at all. So would you get pencils out and alter that to piano at C, altos, piano tenors, and at the bottom of the page, piano for both boys entries. That leaves us room then for a crescendo through page 11 and through page 12. Now what about breathing? Top of line page 11. Obviously the Decani boy is not going to be able to get right through without a breath so you've got to arrange to stagger it. You can easily tell when your neighbor is going to breathe. Harrison, when you breathe, Sutton Jones mustn't breathe and Similarly, McLean, when you breathe, Martin mustn't. Is that quite clear? Work in pairs, and then we can get a long line unbroken. Uh, as much bass as possible, again, as you go down in the last three bars, down the scale, crescendo. So don't start with your maximum on the word but, but make a crescendo downwards. Can I hear basses only, the last three bars of page 12? But... Right. 
Good. A chord for everybody, please. The last three bars. The actual climax coming in the very last bar, sing right through to the word leads. No breath from anybody. One. Much better. Uh, tenors, I liked very much, the bottom of page 12. You got enough tone on your quavers to come through there. Uh, in a moment or two, I'm going to ask the cello and bass and organ to play with us, and then the bass line will be beneath the tenors. You needn't fear that you're giving too much there at all. It's most important that those quavers are clear. Now, I'd like to sing just again from letter C, <coughs> starting with the alto lead there, to see if we can grade our tone, getting increasing excitement and intensity from letter C to the end. Can I have a chord of B major with F sharp at the top? Alto lead, piano, and one. You know, straight away after one, who walk not, right? One. There are just certain things I'd like to refresh your memory about. That is in the chorale, the importance of being absolutely together at the beginning of each phrase. It means that every boy has got to look. The importance of phrasing away on the semi breves at the end of each line. And in the chorus, number two, the importance again of shaping each phrase carefully and building up to the natural climax suggested by the music and bringing out any quaver movement particularly carefully. Now, could we have a chord please from organ and I'd like to sing numbers one and two without stopping as a performance.
Now sit down, please, would you? <coughs> Let's have a quick post-mortem now. The chorale, I liked almost all of it. Some of the words disappeared that time. I will suffer naught to hide the I didn't get the T there, but otherwise I like the tone gradation and I like the balance. Uh, number two had its good moments and it had its bad moments. Uh, just mark in the third bar, page three, tenuto. The minimum there should be a rather longer one. The German word is nichts there and it will take time, so don't clip that minimum. Otherwise, all went well until Page six, again, De Canae trebles. It was nearer D sharp than D natural, but we can put that right tomorrow. Alto is at the bottom of page six. I should have liked more tone, if you can give it, in the first bar. Uh, the worst part was page seven, second trebles. Sharp went you in the last two bars there, and in the whole, most of the top line of page eight. I think it's, of course, one or two of you are a bit tired. But we can put that right again tomorrow and the next day. And it'll be right by the time we perform it. Uh, page 10, from Let Us See to the End, was better. We remembered our piano, but altos don't let the words go there, who walk not by the flesh. We must have the K of walk, the T of not. And though you gave me a general build to the end, I didn't get what I wanted in the last three bars, but as the spirit leads. So would you start the last three bars a little quieter, not fortissimo, but single forte, so if we can get a crescendo through those three bars to the final word leads. Let's just do from letter C to the end again. Would you stand? Chord of B major, please, with F sharp at the top. Start with the word who, Altos, please. Right. was for the Amateur Choir, the seventh of eight weekly programs designed to help amateur choirs and conductors in the preparation and performance of works in the choral repertoire. In this week's program, the choir of King's College, Cambridge, with Simon Preston, organ, Howard Goff, cello, and John Pound, double bass, were being rehearsed by David Wilcox in the chorale and first chorus from Jesu Priceless Treasure by Bach. The eighth program in this series will be broadcast at the same time next week when Stanford Robinson will rehearse the Halley Choir in Vaughan Williams' Benedicity. That's next Tuesday in Network 3 at half past six.